What is up, fam? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jax. Thank you so much for joining me once again. We are about to go all the way back down the rabbit hole with some more information on 1MDB and TMG. So thank you so much for joining me and let's get going. So happy Sunday, everybody. Happy weekend. It is raining here once again. Kind of a nasty, gloomy Sunday out here, but perfect time to make a new video. So what I've seen over the last week is that there is understandably some confusion and some uh, ideas and stuff running around that are not accurate uh, in terms of what goes with the 1MDB scandal and what happens with Amber and what happens with TMG. So um, for starters, uh, I just want to be clear that Amber does not have anything to do with TMG, okay? That is, those things are not related other than that she uses allegations that they bring forward for her own purposes later on. But you have to remember that after the divorce, like, everything's kind of calm in 2017, 2018. Uh, things are pretty normal for Johnny. Pirates 5 comes out. Um, he's working on Labyrinth, Mur Murder on the Orient Express, uh, Crimes of Grindelwald. So things are like very normal until the op-ed happens. And that's was like the point of the whole trial is the op-ed. Uh, that's the point of the whole defamation trial. So, but this TMG lawsuit starts in 2017 and it's a whole different beast. Okay. Amber does not have anything to do with the connection of Penske and Rolling Stone and inserting herself in that mask, that, that is not how that worked. Um, these are two completely separate things other than them each using each other's allegations, like TMG saying they heard that he assaulted her and her saying he uses an earpiece because he's drunk. Um, so that kind of thing. Other than that, no. Okay. There's some other stuff I saw floating around. I saw a comment yesterday um where somebody <laughs> expressed that uh trump and musk could not possibly be involved in these media shenanigans because the media hates them um the media situation is only to do with johnny the rest of this revolves around a very large money laundering scandal billions and billions of dollars of money laundered uh, has nothing to do with the media. The only thing regarding the media is Johnny's piece of the puzzle with Penske, TMG, and the Hollywood trades. And that is like a tiny fraction of the story. So for everyone who is here because of Johnny, his piece of this puzzle is very, very small. Even though everyone's interested in the media part of it and how you know, TMG promised to slander him and destroy his career and all that stuff. Yes, all of that did happen, and it is big in terms of him and his life. But in the story of 1MDB, if you remember what he said in the Rolling Stone article about, I'm just a small part of this, yes, he is probably the smallest part. It's only that he kind of stepped into something inadvertently, and they just put him through the ringer for that. So very very small portion of this story has to do with johnny and his money and the the press reaction to him and how that all went down um so i hope that that clears up a couple of things <laughs> that i've seen floating around um you know the thing i know that uh <laughs> i know people are very angry with amber rightfully so uh but it's not fair and it's a very large leap to make her responsible for literally every single thing that happened. Um, it's just not accurate. Uh, sorry to be the bearer of bad news if you really wanted that to be true. Um, but it's, it's just not, this is a totally separate thing that happened. So anyways, uh, let's get back to our, favorite flow chart, shall we? <laughs> All right, here we are once again. What I want to talk about today is I want to put a few more pieces together for you guys. Last time we talked about Boy Schiller a little bit. Um, 
and a little bit of this part, like Najib, who was the former Malaysian PM, wound up going to prison over this whole situation. Um, but because there were questions about Tesla and the Trump connection and this stuff, I am going to go over that, which kind of works its way through the Crown Prince and the Purge and these kind of few things up here, as well as Goldman Sachs. Um, I'm also going to touch on these two entities here that come back around to uh, Ari at WME because I did speak about them in my last live stream, but not in a direct video about this. So just want to make sure that that gets compiled into where, it's, where it should be <laughs> to be seen. So unfortunately, I cannot share two screens at once, which really sucks because I would love to have the chart up along with what I'm going to show you, but that's okay. Here is the Goldman Sachs story. They were charged in the foreign bribery case and they agreed to pay over $2.9 billion. Uh, the Malaysian subsidiary admitted to conspiring to violate the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act in connection with the scheme to pay over a billion dollars in bribes to Malaysia and Abu Dhabi officials to obtain lucrative business for Golden Stacks, including its role in underwriting approximately $6.5 billion in three bond deals for one Malaysia development, BHD, one MDB, for which the bank earned hundreds of millions in fees. Goldman Sachs will pay more than $2.9 billion as part of its coordinated resolution with criminal and civil authorities in the United States, United Kingdom, Singapore, and elsewhere. Now, of course, if you look at the chart... Uh, Goldman Sachs does come back around to Ari and he does do business with them, um, you know, attends their conferences and has a relationship with them. All right. Moving to the other side of the chart is we have these LLCs. Lionheart LLP is a hedge fund that was started by the Mandel brothers and is co-signed for by a man by the name of David Kite out of this Benari Capital Management LLC. Both of these companies are out of Willamette, Illinois, which is the hometown of Ari Emanuel. And it is very interesting, I think, that there is that Johnny Depp's money winds up in a hedge fund in Willamette, Illinois, where this guy is from, and these guys are doing business. Lionheart LP, so Adam says, nice chart. That is the flow chart that we're looking at constantly. Lionheart LP on the right is the Mandel-owned hedge fund. They grabbed millions of JD's money into where is Lionheart based. Willamette, Illinois is a strange place for TMG to run a hedge fund out of. What is Ari Emanuel's hometown? Willamette. So the other thing about... TMG and Ari is that Ari is very close with them. Ari Emanuel quoted as saying the Mandels are true, honest, loyal brokers whom he trusted with his own finances. Yeah, imagine that. Y'all are doing weird stuff together. TMG's 30-year client, Ari Emanuel, got $400 million for way more endeavor from Saudi Arabia. I know things are a little bit complicated still on trying to make it easier for everybody, but yeah. Here we see Ari, de Ari defended TMG. This is talking about the Penske stuff. We've been through these tweets already before. Read any story in Deadline Variety of Rolling Stone on our five lawsuits over the last five years. Right. So hopefully this is starting to bring the picture together a little bit more. If we go over here, we have this SEC form. Uh, which sort of lay, which lays out the members of the Lionheart LP fund. So here is David Kite out of the Benari Capital Management LLC. I'll get back to that in a moment. But here are Joel and Rob Mandel, member of Benari Capital Management LLCs, also uh, incorporating this new hedge fund security investment fund. Now, there's something very interesting 
about Benari Capital Management, there is almost no information about this thing. Okay, so if you go, so this, where it says SEC form is what I just showed you. If you go here, that's it. The only other thing that comes up, and you have to search for David Kite himself, who is the first person listed on the SEC page, and you get this on his LinkedIn. Managing Director, Benari Capital Management, June 2004 to December 2008. Four years, seven months, Chicago. I think it was a little bit more than that, considering the Lionheart LP situation. Because that SEC form is from February of 2010. So, yeah, kind of interesting. So, anyways, General Partner Managing Director of Lionheart LP and Lionheart Insurance Fund, both multi-strategy fund of hedge funds. Lionheart Insurance Fund was only available through an annuity or life insurance policy. Interviewed and analyzed hundreds of hedge funds to create a diversified fund of funds. Monthly conference calls with managers to evaluate performance. Quarterly site visits to meet with the managers face-to-face -face and review their holdings. Determine allocations and redemption to new and existing managers. Use quantitative models to stress test portfolio under different situations. Manage all cash accounts as well as investor investments and redemptions. Manage relationships with auditors, Deloitte and Touche, legal advisors, Winston and Strawn, and administrator, Fortis and Conifer Fund Services. So that's it. It's literally what this guy says, which some of it appears to already not be quite accurate, let's say, uh, considering the SEC filing for Lionheart is done in 2010, and he lists leaving there in 2008, that doesn't add up. Very, very mysterious. Let's say mysterious. <laughs> now, as for Adam's mentioning of the Johnny's money going into the Lionheart LP, here is that. Giant Depp's lawsuit has Chicago links. Embattled actor Giant Depp engrossed in multi-million dollar legal battle with his former business managers, is seeking records from Chicago area hedge fund, including any communication relating to Mayor Rahm Emanuel's Hollywood mogul brother. Pirates of the Caribbean star and his new business manager in January filed $25 million lawsuit against the management group of Beverly Hills, California based company founded by brothers, Joel and Rob Mandel, alleging it defrauded Depp out of millions over 17 years. A few weeks later, the Mandels countersued for hundreds of thousands of dollars in unpaid management fees, alleging that Depp had ignored repeated warnings about his finances and continued spending. In court papers filed in Cook County Circuit Court this week, Depp's lawyer subpoenaed records from Lionheart LP, a Wilmette-based hedge fund. U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filings list the Mandel brothers as directors of the company. Lionheart allegedly received more than $2 million from a trust held by the actor, despite the fact that the Mandels possessed direct ownership interests in the company, Depp's attorney said in a separate legal filing. The filing alleged that TMG had Depp invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in at least three other companies owned by TMG employees. In court papers, the Mandels have said TMG and Depp jointly invested in Lionheart and that the actor cashed out at a profit in 2008. Now, if you go back to the, my previous video about the intro to the TMG case, where we're going through all of the media stuff and the filings of this case, you'll see where Johnny and Adam say that Johnny's investments were returned to him without a profit. And as I explained there, that goes to all the loans and things that they were taking out, which builds the Ponzi scheme where these guys are taking Johnny's money, using it for their own things, then taking out loans, putting the money back into Johnny's account so that it looks like it didn't go anywhere. In an email Thursday, TMG attorney Michael Kump reiterated that point. Johnny Depp is subpoenaing documents about an investment that he was cashed out of close to 10 years ago at profit. The subpoenas from Depp's attorneys filed Wednesday also seek any communications the hedge fund its directors or TMG had that relate to Ari Emanuel, who runs the talent agency WME IMG. TMG defended the mayor's brother. Ari Emanuel had absolutely nothing to do with that investment, Kump wrote in an email to the Tribune. Depp knows that his claims against TMG are utterly baseless and simply trying to harass TMG. Court filings here do not explain why Depp's attorneys want those records. But last summer, Vanity Fair magazine quoted Ari Emanuel as saying the Mandels are true, honest, loyal brokers with whom he trusts with his own finances. Imagine that. Katrina Dela Cruz, one of Depp's attorneys, declined to comment on the subpoenas Wednesday. Representatives for Lionheart could not be reached. Shocker. 
LA Times recorded in August that several federal agencies, including the SEC, had launched probes of TMG. So there you go. Let's go through a few of these items here that come down to Ari from 1MDB because some of this caused some confusion online yesterday. Number one is Tesla and Elon. Elon is very, very good friends with Ari Emanuel. Elon was on the board of WME for a bit. Uh, Endeavor Group said its IPO. Prospectus that it plans to add Elon Musk as a new member of its board of directors. This is March 31st of 2021. Endeavor is finally to go public after scrapping its IPO in 2019. Uh, so he's going to join the board of directors. Now he does leave uh, in 2022, citing that he is just too busy to stay on the board. And you can make of that what you want. But the fact remains that Elon and Ari are very good friends. So if you've ever seen these very famous photos, that is Ari Emanuel hosing Elon down. Uh, there are also these reports about Ari trying to help Elon broker the Twitter settlement with Twitter's board of directors to settle the legal battle over the $44 billion takeover. Manuel, who was spotted partying with shirtless Musk aboard a yacht off Mykonos over the summer, contacted Twitter board member Egon Durbin within the last few weeks to recommend the two sides reach a settlement before their case goes to trial, report said on Friday. So these guys are friends. They are good friends. And as far as the Tesla involvement goes, when you're looking at the direct connection that, share, that shows Tesla here at the bottom connected to the Saudi Arabia Sovereign Wealth Fund. So here is where that connection comes in. After days of speculation and conflicting reports, Elon Musk has broken his silence about his plan to take Tesla private. In a Monday morning blog post, Musk explained that he has been in talks for weeks with managers of Saudi Arabia's Sovereign Wealth Fund to finance the massive deal, which some estimate could cost as much as $50 billion. But it's unclear whether Musk's explanation will mollify federal regulators who are reportedly looking into whether his statements from last week were misleading. Musk said that the Saudis first approached him about taking Tesla private in early 2017, but only ramped up those talks in recent days after purchasing almost 5% of the company's stock on the public markets. Musk said that he took a meeting with the managing director of the fund on July 31st, where the director expressed regret that the going private talks hadn't moved forward. So once again, if we look at Adam's old tweet thread here, we will see how he brings that in. Penthouse guy Elon Musk was sued for fraud by the SEC. They took his Tesla chairmanship away as punishment. To whom did he claim he was selling Tesla? Here it is. So it's all coming together, I hope. <laughs> now I'm going to branch off to the right of the wealth fund into the Blackstone, uh, Trump, Jared Kushner, Muhammad stuff. If you guys are sticking with me through these videos, I really appreciate you. If you're if you're working on understanding it, please don't be afraid to watch the videos more than one time. Start from the beginning. I if you have no knowledge of these cases whatsoever, I honestly would start with the TMG case intro and overview, then move to the rabbit hole, the original rabbit hole video, and then come to this video because it is definitely a lot to take in. And particularly if you really want to know about Johnny's part of it and the rest of it is not as interesting to you, the TMG case intro and overview is the video that you're most likely looking for. All right. So Blackstone infrastructure, Donald Trump, Jared Kushner, Mohammed bin Salman. Let's go. Here is Blackstone. U.S. buyout firm, which is relying on Saudi Arabia to provide half the money for its planned $40 billion infrastructure fund. Waved off concerns about funding on Thursday, even as controversy rages over the disappearance of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Blackstone chief executive Stephen Schwartzman, please remember that name because you will see it right here. 
Stephen Schwartzman, pulled out this week from a planned investment conference in Saudi Arabia following other Wall Street media leaders over the disappearance of Jamal Khashoggi. Blackstone COO Jonathan Gray acknowledged that the firm may get some questions over its Saudi ties, but stressed Blackstone's autonomy in investing in the infrastructure fund. Investors have enormous confidence with us, which is why we feel like this business is very much on the path to growing large scale, regardless of obviously some near-term challenges. Blackstone, the world's largest manager of alternative assets such as private equity and real estate, has long cultivated Saudi Arabia as an investor. And the kingdom's main sovereign wealth fund agreed last year to contribute up to $20 billion for its new infrastructure fund. Blackstone has so far raised around $5 billion for its infrastructure fund, half of which came from Saudi Arabia. Now, let's move up the chart to the Trump situation. Trump's America First infrastructure plan let Saudi Arabia and Blackstone take care of it. A private equity firm run by a close Trump advisor is partnering with Saudi Arabia to privatize U.S. infrastructure. All right. The Saudi kingdom joined forces with a top outside advisor to Trump to build a $40 billion war chest to privatize U.S. infrastructure. The Saudi Public Investment Fund announces $20 billion investment with Blackstone, the private equity giant whose CEO, Stephen Schwartzman, chairs the Strategic and Policy Forum, a key group of private sector advisors to President Trump. In recent months, Schwartzman has become a key advisor to the president, speaking to him several times a week, according to Politico. Now, not to get too deep in the weeds on this, I'm just trying to make the connections make sense for everybody. But if you go back to my rabbit hole video, you will see based off of Adam's tweet uh, how some of these things fit a little bit more together. Trump was subpoenaed in the 1MDB trial with Roz, uh, Proz Michel that is going to trial at the end of this month, as was former President Obama. Uh, they will not be testifying, but you can see the articles that I've linked that Adam first posted on his Twitter account a few days ago that kind of explained the whole rundown of what happened, which is the Malaysians trying to get Trump to stop the investigation through the Saudi stuff uh, because he was friends with them. And subsequently, he winds up being subpoenaed. Obviously, the investigation was not stopped because we're talking about billions of dollars in laundered money. So if you go back to that video, you can click through the links in my description there uh, to see all of those articles and how it comes together in the video. All right, moving right through the chart. Next on the list is Jared Kushner. He secured a $2 billion investment fund from a fund led by the Saudi Crown Prince, a close ally during the Trump administration. If you look back at the chart, you'll see that the Saudi Crown Prince is right next to Jared Trump and the Wealth Fund, despite objections from the fund's advisors about the merits of the deal. A panel that screens investments for the main Saudi sovereign wealth fund cited concerns about their proposed deal with Mr. Kushner's newly formed private equity firm, Affinity Partners, et cetera, et cetera. But days later, the full board of the $620 billion public investment fund led by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, Saudi Arabia's de facto ruler and a beneficiary of Mr. Kushner's support when he worked as a White House advisor, overruled the panel. Ethics experts say that such a deal creates the appearance of potential payback for Mr. Kushner's actions in the White House or a bid for future favor. Trump seeks and wins another term in 2024. Okay, moving right along up the chart. Let's go back for one minute just so you can see where these things all fall into place if you don't have this saved. Okay, so we have gone through all of these items. We are now going to move up into this area. The 2017 Saudi Arabia Purge and Good Star Limited Petro Saudi International. Okay. <laughs> it is a lot, you guys. It is a lot. This is a fucking crazy thing that happened. Here we go. Back to our article. Malaysian financer Joe Lowe owned firm linked to 1MDB scandal source. For the past year, the Malaysian government has said a company called Good Star Limited, which received $1.3 billion from the scandal hit 1MDB investment fund, was owned by the fund's joint venture partner Petro Saudi International Limited. Now an official with knowledge of a regulatory investigation has confirmed what Malaysia's central bank has recently asserted. Malaysian financier Low Tech Joe was the sole owner of Good Start during its five years as a company. What I can say for sure is that Joe Low is the exclusive 
beneficial owner of Good Star. Low, who is most often referred to as Joe Low, was the owner of Good Star throughout those five years. Both Low and the government have denied he has anything to do with One Malaysia Development, BHD, 1MDB, a fund Prime Minister Najib Razak founded in September 2009 to invest in strategic energy projects. Well, this guy is nowhere to be found. He's totally a fugitive on the run, has never been able to be arrested in charge, and this guy is in jail. So, liabilities. Malaysian companies and banks linked to 1MDB are at the center of corruption and money laundering probes that have led investigators to look at transactions and financial relationships across the globe, from Malaysia to Singapore and the Seychelles, from Abu Dhabi to offshore companies in the Caribbean, and from the United States to Switzerland. Investigations are being conducted by authorities in the United States, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Singapore, and the United Arab Emirates. Unraveling the status of Good Star's ownership is important, investigators say, because it will help determine whether 1MDB's funds were misappropriated or used for legitimate investments as the government maintains. If Lowe is the sole owner of Good Star, it could indicate that 1MDB funds were not directed to an energy project investment with Petro Saudi, but for another purpose, investigators say. All right, let's move forward. <laughs> How a Saudi family feud filled paranoia that led to Khashoggi's murder. I'm going to go through this kind of quickly because I'm looking for something specific. But here is Kushner again, uh, visiting with MBS in late October 2017. Okay, so after MBS took power, what you see on the chart that is referred to as the Saudi Arabia purge is he wrangles up all these princes and held, holds them in Riyadh. Uh, and one of them is Prince Turkey bin Abdullah, who is the son of the late king. Now, how this ties into 1MDB is as follows. His closest advisor is this businessman named Tarek Obaid. Now, if we go quickly down here, they tried to kidnap him, a bunch of stuff happened. All right, for purposes of what we're talking about here. He's under investigation in Switzerland and in the United States on suspicion of improper payments from the Malaysian Sovereign Wealth Fund known as 1MDB to a company called Petro Saudi International, which was founded by Turkey and Obaid. He has not been accused of any wrongdoing. So there is that piece. Now, we have talked about the lawyers in the last couple videos. The lawyers do connect from TMG going through. But I've talked about the f for the front part of that connection before with TMG and sort of Johnny and that stuff. But here you're going to see the other side of the connection to the Malaysian connection. So former Prime Minister uh, Najib Razak, caught in the middle of the 1MDB scandal, armed himself with top team of American lawyers, Ashcroft Law Firm, which is directly off to the left of Najib's name on the flowchart. The services provided by Ashcroft Law Firm being financed by a foreign government, foreign political party, or other foreign principal. Now, this guy wound up in jail, so kind of the end. If we run, run through here real quick, you will see the connection come together more easily. Joe McFarlane, Reza Aziz, and Joe Lowe were connected, and I think charged. Well, they tried to charge, but Joe Lowe has never been caught. Their company, Red Granite Pictures, responsible for making Wolf of Wall Street and a couple other movies. Who were their criminal lawyers? Matthew Schwartz at Boyce Schiller, who is on the front part of Najib Raza. So Ashcroft Group is to the left of his name. Boyce Schiller is to the right of his name, which connects to Red Granite, Riz Aziz, the stepson, Jolo, all those things. So who are the former Malaysian prime minister's American criminal lawyers? Boys as well. Defense lawyer, a friend of Harvey Weinstein, Schwartz, Ashcroft, also named. So we just went over. Correct. Schwartz at Boyce Schiller. So all of these people and things and companies, it's a giant cluster. It is a huge, giant cluster. Rabbit hole. All of the things. <laughs> all of the things. So just so you can get a good look at everything that I've gone over today, everything from this side up through here, this whole tower, here's the Ashcroft Group, Najib, Red Granite Pictures, Boy Schiller, and Riz Aziz, who's the stepson. 
That was a lot. I'm sure that there are still outstanding questions. I'm, you know, doing my best to kind of streamline everything, but it is kind of crazy. You know, it's a lot. It's wild. It is a huge scandal, just massive fraud, financial fraud, all kinds of madness, you know. And it is complicated. It's complex. It's a huge spider web of stuff. It's hard to get through all of it. I know it's difficult to try and make it make sense, especially if people are kind of only coming into it or only starting to understand from the very small part um, where Johnny comes into it. Uh, but, you know, there is this other trial happening at the end of the month, and hopefully that will help to shine some light on some of the other things that were going on as well. If there's any information that comes out, because if you look at Adam's tweet, the whole point of his tweet is that the, the media has been pretty silent about the whole thing um, with good reason. When you look at all these connections and stuff, because they don't want to report on it. It's basically like all of their own are under investigation here. And a lot of crazy stuff has happened. So anyways, I will leave you guys with a few little fun tidbits um, that do relate to Johnny. So a couple things to tie up from the last video that I was looking for. And if you just some things that if you haven't seen them, here they are. We look forward to responding to Mr. Depp's latest falsehoods in our amended pleadings. David Shane, spokesperson for the management group. If you want an Amber connection, here is one roundabout. David Shane is PR guy. This is PR guy that Amber hired in the middle of the trial to do her bidding. He also represented TMG for their PR. TMG is seeking 560000 in unpaid fees, as well as a ruling that Depp is solely responsible for his current financial situation. So that's fun. Here is one of Adam's statements. Actor's lawyer Adam Waldman told people on Monday that Depp's former management company has since shown that they have no viable defense other than to follow through on their stated plan to attempt to smear Mr. Depp, which they absolutely did. Here's another fun little piece that goes with the Penske uh, and media stuff. Upstart Film Industry Newsletter, the Ankler has bumped against a problem with a dispute with Penske in 2021 after announcing it had hired Tatiana Siegel from The Hollywood Reporter. After the dust-up settled, Siegel first landed at Penske-owned Rolling Stone before joining Penske-owned Variety as executive editor for Film and Media. And we all know how lovely she has been along the way, minus a couple of articles during the trial where she seemed to come to her senses. And in my last video, I mentioned that I had been looking for a, a blurb, an article where Adam mentioned TMG offices being raided by the feds and someone found it for me. So thank you very much to ghost guy on Twitter who found the blurb. It was from an article in the blast and it was actually, it's actually a little bit longer than I remember it. So thank you again to ghost guy. If you go check out my Twitter, I retweeted them and here is the screenshot. Johnny's lawyer, Adam Waldman, told The Blast, Bloom is accused, among other things, of a failure to supervise the fraudulent activity of the Mandel brothers and TMG, Mr. Depp's former business managers, who are under multiple federal criminal investigations and whose offices were raided by the FBI in June of 2017. Judge Green agreed to move their trial from May to September and ruled that Bloom is entitled to Mandel's sealed documents. So that is it, you guys. That is going to be all for today. If you stuck with me through this whole video, I love you. I appreciate you. And thanks for hanging with me. I hope that you found it informative. I hope that it clears some things up. And I hope that it brings the picture of everything of the whole scandal more into view and goes ahead and separates the little piece of Johnny's involvement and gives a better idea of what the whole entire scandal is about. So once again, thank you guys very much. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that fun stuff. Everything helps the channel, the algorithm, and all those things that are important to YouTubes. I appreciate you all. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Have a beautiful week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.